Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain. This week is, uh, well, we are, the first day of spring was yesterday, so we are kind of in the mode now of actually getting veg going and doing transplants and all kinds of things. We got our first round of lettuce that we're gonna put out for uh, this season. Plus we've got sweet peas and we've got onions to plant. We've got a lot of stuff on the veg side of plant. But I thought today what we do is talk about just a couple of things that sometimes you can find free plants around your landscape. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, give you an example of one of the things that we have here that we are transplanting to uh, you know, make a new, new bit of a flower area. And the second thing is, is uh, time to take some cuttings of mums. So if you have fall mums that are specimen mums or if you have mums that are uh, in this case, these are pot mums. We bought them, you know, from a, a garden center a long time ago, last year. That's a long time ago. These uh, are not on patent, as you can tell, because they just use the label pink. <laughs> <laughs> so these are pretty common, what you call pot mums, that are used for putting around in flower pots for fall. And these uh, have been in the greenhouse overwintered. And it's a perfect time now to start taking some cuttings off of these guys. We did a video uh, a while back, I can't remember exactly when, but it, it was a fairly popular one about expanding your fall garden mums. And we're gonna be using the same technique on these guys here to uh, take cuttings off of it. I believe that's four years ago. Is that how long ago it was? I think it was. Oh, it's, it's time flies. Then the other last thing we're working on today is it's time to start sprouting our sweet potato slips. So we got our first variety here. This is uh, the uh, Vardaman variety, and uh, we're we've got we've kind of narrowed it down to two. We started a couple years ago with like three or four varieties to kind of evaluate which ones we like the best, and it kind of seemed we like the this particular variety. And then we have a variety that we got from uh, the grocery store. We have no idea what the variety is. We kind of think it might have been Vardaman, and that's why we call it Vardaman. Um, but we're going to be um, starting those, and they have a nice yellow uh, flesh to them. And then we like the Georgia Jet, which is also a nice one. Um, so these, we start the slips now, get them on a heat mat, and uh, you know, get the, them going. We kind of did a video on that too a while back too, so I'm just kind of referencing back if you want more information on the specifics of how we start them. Uh, you can go back and take a look at those. So we just got a lot of things going on. Just uh, little things that you have to get done at certain times of the year. Yeah, we've got pruning still left to do on some of the roses. Uh, we've got most of the fruit trees from last week. They are finally planted. We got those guys all in. Yay. And we've got uh, strawberries, new strawberry plants that we're going to be putting in. And plus, elderberry. And uh, plus we have a couple of elderberry plants that we're going to be experimenting with uh, to see if we can make our own elderberry syrup in a year or two. Because everything's always a year or two off. <laughs> Should have done this a couple of years ago. Yeah. So anyway, enough talking. Let's just show you some of the things we're doing. We're going to start with columbines. Okay, these were um, petticoat, pink petticoat uh, columbines that naturalized on their own over the course of uh, two seasons. And uh, it started actually by accident <laughs> a couple of years ago. And we want to be able to transplant a bunch of these guys out before we put our, our mulch in. Uh, for the spring and summer and we use a like a straw hay mulch over the top so the ones that we're going to leave we want them to get a little taller before we apply the mulch uh, but we're going to take a bunch of these guys here that are right on the edge and we're going to plant these out in the area close to where we have our rhubarb and uh, that kind of give us a little extra color out in that area so these were volunteers and the, the reason what happened was we had been raising uh, pink petticoat as a cut um, flower. And uh, one year we had some failures, at least we thought they were failures. And so we just uh, mixed the failed plants into some mulch that we put down uh, for these roses in this area in here. And lo and behold, not all of them were dead. Well, the weird thing was that I was making choices on what to bump up from the little three quarter inch soil blocks of this pink petticoat. I was bumping them up into 
um, two inch, right? Yeah. And I thought a lot of these were really marginal and several of them were dead. I thought they were dead. So I was, you know, saying, okay, the soil that's around the seed, um, I'll just add it to our rose um, bed, you know, just to add. And last year, was it last year, right? Mm -hmm. They, I had all these <laughs> columbines. It was like, it was crazy. It's like, I thought you guys were dead. Well, they're, they're going to, I think if, if we, you know, just kind of uh, let them go, we'll eventually have a lot of this colonized in here. So these guys are um, pretty fertile, you know, in their own seed. So here's an example of a plant that we can transplant. We kind of, the roots aren't super deep on these guys and they tend to spread. And so like this right here is actually two plants. And uh, they're, they're young, so they're perfect to transplant. And I'm just using my um, Hori Hori knife. Now it's not, I'm not gonna worry too much if you know, some of the roots are you know, fairly disturbed because these guys are probably gonna you'd be set back this year. I don't expect the transplants to bloom much. But they, they, the columbines should grow nicely with the uh, ferns underneath the pin oak because they can grow in um, partial shade. Oh, they can grow in dappled shade, okay. Right, yeah, a dapple or partial shade. And um, that's what's going to be back there. It'll get really shady in the hottest part of the day. Um, but it'll get some sun, you know, early and, you know, up till about noon, right? Yeah. And then um, they should do really well back there. And right now we just have lots of fern. Uh, we planted some ferns back there, and I want to envision in the next year or two seeing the nice fern get bigger and bigger and have beautiful flowers. And, the, you know, why, got, why go buy some if I have a ton of these guys back here that I can use, um, you know, and move them over there. Their pink petticoat is just really pretty. And uh, it seems to be the hardiest of all the Yeah, we tried, a, we tried a whole bunch of different kinds that were, um, some of them were blue. And uh, I forgot the exact names of these guys. They're the Barlow's. Barlow series, that's what it was. Series, and we've had the blue and the lime and... Um, they didn't seem as robust, though. But these petticoat ones, whoa, they are hardy. Well, we're in zone 8B, as we've talked about before. So our climate here is uh, pretty moist in the wintertime and into uh, mid, actually we stay kind of in our wet season all the way till almost June, early June. And um, that really, I think, you know, for spring really helps these guys get a really good start. And so let's go over to the area where we're gonna plant and we can show you, you know, what we're putting in and how we're doing it. Okay, this is the area that we're gonna be uh, transplanting the columbines into and uh, I'm not going to use a lot of a lot of highly skilled uh, techniques here. This is kind of a, a leaf mold compost soil over the top. I'm just going to make sure that these guys, you know, the roots of these guys get into the soil and that they're not covered by the mulch totally. And I'm going to plant these in a pretty thick type pattern because what we want these guys to kind of do is kind of grow together into a drift. And look at that, I got a little volunteer maple tree right there. This right here could soon, in just 35 short years, be 35 feet tall. Oops. Okay, we don't need kitty help here. Thank you. So this soil, when I transplanted these ferns, these ferns also were all volunteer. And uh, we took them from various places on the property. That, How uh, they got there, I don't know. Yeah, they just kind of like, uh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> they came in with something. Because we didn't plant them anywhere. No. They were all 100% volunteer. And uh, we're going to get a good rain tomorrow, so they say. Over the next few days. You know, over the next few days. So this should be pretty good. And the soil has already got a lot of moisture in them. So I'm thinking these guys should, uh, 
you know, take off pretty well. So you took out about 17 different plants. Yeah, that's what I counted. And you hardly looked like you touched it. Yeah, there's still more in there. It'll still be a nice drift in there. And even if we lose a few, I'm not going to worry about them too much. But, you know, one of the things is you look at something like this and you go, well, you know, you'll go into a nursery and, and, and you'll look at a potted pink columbine in a, like a four inch pot, something about this size. And in this day and age, you'll probably pay four or five bucks for it, you know. And we so, like free. Never underestimate, you know, what you can divide or get a hold of on your own property. Particularly if you've been gardening for a few years, you know. Sorry about the wind. Yeah, we got a little bit of breeze going today. The weather's going to be changing today. All right, we need no help. Thank you. <laughs> You're driving me nuts, Carrots. Carrots just wants to help. So we're just making sure the roots are all in in the soil and like I said and we're tucking them the mulch around it and I picked this time of year instead of fall to transplant these because I knew where they were <laughs> basically they came up really early this year yeah looking hardy and nice and well I'm also thinking too that we're you know I'm not gonna worry too much about them blooming or not blooming this year just this year is about get just, them established. just get them established yeah and maybe we lose a couple of them but you know if we can keep the drift alive here this should look pretty cool yeah we're gonna add in the fall some naturalizing daffodils and snowdrops yeah and then we've got some cyclamen down below under the trees that we can move some of those around too. Yeah, I think it may be like for the edge over there, you know? Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's pretty amazing how fast that went, huh? And that's all there is to it. Yay. Easy job done. So we move on to the next one. All right, this time of year for us, again, we're zone 8B. Our target to get our sweet potato slips in the ground is usually right around a little bit after Memorial Day, but it kind of depends on how the weather's going. Sometimes we can get a what would be considered a, a cool spell of weather, uh, meaning like 50 degrees, 55 degrees and rainy for uh, a number of days in late May or into early June. So many times we don't get our slips in the ground until almost uh, right around the somewhere between the 5th and the 10th of June. And it usually our weather kind of changes pretty, pretty abruptly at that point. I mean, the last of the cool wet, it goes away and it pretty much changes over to consistently warm 70 to 85 degree days. Sometimes we get a little bit warmer. So in essence, our target then is to get these guys sprouted and get to the point where we can start harvesting slips sometime around mid-May, 15th to the 20th of May. And then we can get them rooted uh, we don't we don't plant the slips directly in the ground because our ground typically isn't warm enough to uh, you know really get them jump started like that. So we're gonna start them and and put them into um, pots basically and then transplant the pots. And so the whole idea is we don't want them growing in the pots too long because what'll happen is the the roots from the slip will actually start to wrap around and then that would affect the actual shape of your sweet potato. If you notice what I mean. So instead of being nice, long, and straight, what happens is you get more of them that kind of have, you know, kinks in them or something like that. Um, and that's just because of the nature of our ground. We need to have it consistently warm above 50 degrees for these guys to do well. Otherwise, they'll just sit there, turn yellow, and become slug bait. So that's kind of a, it's kind of a fine line. And the soil warms up rapidly uh, once we get, you know, past that last rain. So. Here we are. We need at least six weeks, maybe a bit better, to get these guys, you know, get them, get them to the point where they sprout. They're in dormancy right now. We took them out of our storage. And so what we're gonna do is we checked for any kind of rot spots on it and cut that off and then let the ends dry. And uh, 
if we found anything like that. These are all really solid tubers and there should be lots of eyes on them. Um, typically like last year, we, had, we did two trays of like this where we had approximately you know, eight or so in a tray. And we got, uh, I think when I counted all the slips and I stopped taking them, I had up to 50 at that point, which was more than enough for us to, to plant out um, and give away too. So it really uh, worked out pretty well. I've gone away from using a water method and using this method where I'm just going to cover these guys, you know, once the wounds on these guys have dried, I'm going to cover them with potting soil up to about halfway, leaving just a bit of the surface exposed because that's where the slips are going to start growing. So don't be surprised that maybe, you know, if the tops of these guys start turning a little green in your greenhouse, that's fine because that's just kind of, you know, the process means it's getting started. And also don't be surprised too that it could take several weeks for these things to start showing, you know, sprouts to even or, or even buds. Uh, and lots of times too, for us anyway, the first buds will start out pretty slow. They'll grow pretty slow, but once it kind of gets starting to rolling, you can take slips off of these things pretty regularly um, every several days, uh, what we found, once they really start going. We don't fertilize until, you know, in these things at all. We may put a little fertilizer once, you know, we've taken some slips off just to keep the thing, you know, rejuvenated and running because these will have roots in here uh, in order for the slips to get started. And this is just an easy thing to do. These are just basic trays. Uh, and then we, once we, you know, get it filled with the potting soil and wet it down, we keep it moist, but not sopping wet. You don't want to, you don't want to be super wet. You just want to be moist enough that the plants, um, you know, will get stimulated to grow, but you know, we'll keep the funguses and things at bay. And we put it on a heat mat, uh, make sure that the heat mat is about at uh, close to 80, just to uh, make sure that they have the bottom heat to get them, break their dormancy and, you know, get rocking and rolling. And that's about it with it. And if you need, need to look at, you know, what we did last time, again, we have a video uh, just go back into the archives and uh, search on sweet potatoes and and uh, we have a, a good video on that. Now the last thing that we're going to do, and I'm, I've only got a partial tray going here because I'm working with one color today. Uh, planting up these guys and getting some cutting started on them. Uh, this is the perfect size. We've got a good growth tips on these guys. We've got multiple stems. And uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to take a lot of these guys off and, and start about 18 slips. And this is gonna be, what I'm gonna do is cut these guys down where I'm at least four or five leaves. You're looking at, I've got a good uh, apical grow stem here. I also got a little bit of a spittle bug that got into the greenhouse. Um, and I don't want the leaves on here. So I'm gonna take these bottom leaves off because the focus is we want this thing to generate roots and you know it doesn't have any roots so having extra leaf surface area can actually be a detriment uh, to the plant itself when you're trying to get it going. So what I'm not using though is this time around because my root, I, I checked my rooting hormone and it actually had expired but I think uh, I'm gonna go fly blind on these because I'm gonna have more than enough uh, to get started and so what I'm going to do is just make certain that I, I keep these guys moist and I keep them in a humid environment. And what I want that end to do is I want it to be down in, in a really moist potting soil. And I kind of juiced this potting soil with some biochar, some activated biochar. I put about 5% in here. So that will give porousness, but at the same time, it'll help with extra moisture. Uh, because biochar, again, can hold up to seven times its own weight in moisture. So that'll keep an adequate amount of moisture around the plants, but also with the perlite in it and, and that it'll keep it uh, pretty well aerated. Uh, so we're going to plant these guys out and, and then we'll put a humidity dome. Those, you've probably seen these things before. They're the plastic uh, clear acrylic humidity dome over the top. These domes we use have a vent in it, so excess moisture can vent out, but it's going to hold in uh, it, you know, a good level of high humidity around the plant itself.
And again, I'm going to put this on the heating mat with the sweet potatoes. So having bottom heat for both of these guys will accelerate the rooting process. And that is about it. So we can do, you know, quite a bit of these and probably even if we wanted to, if we have failures on these guys at this time, because we are sitting here at um, March. And so even if I don't get a, you know, if I get 50% rooting on it, I've got plenty of more starts, uh, you know, to choose from. Because by that time with some fertilizer, the mother plant will probably spit out even more. So I can take cuttings off this mother plant, I think for, you know, at least a good three or four weeks and probably, uh, not damage it at all with you know rooting we're going to repot this guy up in a bigger pot and it'll be great for fall so we'll be able to have these other potted mums around the property too so this will be pretty cool and again you know we bought this one plant here uh this was a six dollar plant and was on sale so you know. But check to make sure that you propagation prohibited yeah. is not on the tag we checked and there is no... Yeah, um, this variety is a pretty common, it's just basic basic garden pot mum, and, uh, but it's got a great color. And this is the same technique that we use for um, years taking mum cuttings for cut flower mums. With the exception is, is yeah, we did not use rooting hormone this time. It, it's, rooting hormone is an aid and it certainly helps with your percentage of success. And when we were dealing with the, the, the more, uh, what you'd call collector's item type, you know, fall mums, the- um, The ones we, for, we use for cuts. We use for cuts. Um, we we use, really wanted a high level of success. So we use rooting hormone. And we were also kind of under a time deadline too, yeah. in essence, because uh, we had to make certain that they were in the ground at a certain time. And so, so you could start the pinching and this budding yep, process. Right. But this, even if we miss the timing, notice how neat I am about stuff. I just throw things on the yeah, ground. Yeah, this is how you got columbines. <laughs> You're just tossing stuff. I, I don't understand. How, what, how is it did possible? that happen? <laughs> so it's really pretty simple. Again, you know, we're just stripping it down to, you know, as many leaves as we can get away with. I'm going to left maybe too many on this one here. So I'm going to take a couple more off because we don't want the plant losing a lot of moisture through the leaves itself. And that is as easy as it is to do a six pack. And that's all there is to it. We'll just keep them moist. If we need to, you know, from time to time, even with the humidity dome on, if we notice it's like the humidity isn't high enough, we may give them a little squirt. Uh, we check them a couple of times a day just to make sure they're okay. Uh, you know, when you're in the greenhouse, you can just walk by and take a look. And if they're looking like, you know, maybe they're they're stressing a little bit, a little a little spray bottle of water, just to give a little more humidity, um, doesn't hurt. And they may even wilt a little bit, uh, but don't be surprised on that because, uh, you know, some will fail, but you'll probably get a pretty good percentage that'll root. That. It's just some of the chores. Some of the chores we have to get done. <laughs> we have to do. And uh, so still a lot more. I am thinking, yeah, I got a long list. <laughs> I mean, we still have more roses to prune. We have the garden to really get open yep. and stuff. We have the onions are down there waiting patiently to go. Yeah, they're ready for transplant. All they those onions we started, they looking really good. We've got them down in our propagation house and they're just kind of hardening off a little bit. And, and our lettuce and spinach and yep kale everybody's ready to go and then we got to start keep planting more stuff more flowers more um so veggies. we have the first thing we have to do here before we go too much further we've gone pretty far in this video is we have to offer an extreme apology for you people that are in zones five six <laughs> who are saying i don't know what you're talking about we're under four feet of snow yeah well, I don't um, know. we apologize but uh you know everybody's zone is a little different so just kind of give you some thoughts about things you can do you know when the time is right right but this this is right for us but we're also <laughs> looking at another 
few days of very cool weather and maybe snow mix. No. Yeah, that's kind of the nature of, of our zone is, is like, uh, we'll go along, like today's going to be 60 something degrees, which is pretty nice. But the wind is cool. But it's got a cool wind to it, but um, it's sunny, so it feels great, you right. know, but yeah, then it goes bad, then it goes good, then it, you yeah, know, spring. Yeah, I, I keep hearing and uh, reading on the weather um, app that I'm using that says frozen mix. I hate that. That's winter, uh, snowy, cold rain. And yep. Still got one of those in their future. But there's a place for that too. Yeah. So anyway, um, I That's guess it. we'll have to I say just... au revoir. We're about to go to work. So thanks a lot for joining au us. Yeah, au revoir. It's very French. Au revoir. When are you French? Zane. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> That's more real. Yeah, don't ask me to speak any more German than that. Um, yeah. So what do you say? We say goodbye? Goodbye. Okay, goodbye.